series of attacks. But in order to get that many EMP nukes over U.S. cities, uh, you'd have to be Russia or something. And then, of course, they would just swarm us if they did it. The reason that countries like uh, North Korea would do that is they don't have a large nuclear weapon arsenal. So doing it over top of L.A. could create a massive amount of problems with only one bomb, even though the bomb went so high in the atmosphere as not to create all of the problems that you see with the traditional nuclear missile explosion, to, to clarify that for you. It's been a very informative show, hasn't it? Um, that's why they want to do that in the air like that. A small-scale 5 to 10 kiloton weapon detonated 200 miles above Nebraska or a few weapons detonated 50 miles or so above the eastern, western, and central U.S. states would do the job. Again, uh, North Korea is not going to be able to pull off a few weapons detonated 50 miles above uh, three different sections of the country. Uh, remember the ant and the pumpkin? It's all they can do to get the weapon up in the air. But... They could theoretically pull off one or two above a city, the way I see it. I think, I think that's reasonable. The effects would be nothing short of disastrous, literally the end of the world as we know it. All unprotected and unhardened electrical devices would be left useless. This means that everything, from the refrigerator in your kitchen to the semi-trucks that carry food across the country, would not be functioning. Stock up on canned goods. Uh, e -E. And there's another reason to do so. And let's face it, sooner or later, something's going to happen, and you're going to be happy that you had the food. Um, I stocked up on it during the Ebola outbreak, not because I thought Ebola was going to wipe out the nation, but because I thought that it could be bad enough that it could be a problem. Um, when the nurse came to Canton, who had Ebola, and I'm DJing in Canton, and I'm handling money because I work in a bar, I bought some food. I mean... <laughs> You don't have to be a genius here to see that you don't have to have all of America shut down for this to possibly happen where you live. Uh, they could possibly do it during uh, the winter to freeze people. You could also do it during harvest. If you did it over Nebraska and did it over harvest, that would be a disaster because none of the farm equipment would work. And you could do it the old school way, but it would. by the time you got the equipment to the people, the food would be frozen because they're not already prepared for it in many instances. And the Amish would be all right, I guess. Um, all unprotected and unhardened electrical devices would be useless. If an enemy of the U.S. wants to bring America to its knees without rendering the land completely useless, they could do it with an EMP weapon. Um, again, if you just flat out send a thousand nukes to America, you, you, you're, not, you're going to starve the world because America produces so much food that without America, large portions of the world would starve. So you an EMP is a way to have something left to conquer because nuclear war is not a lose-lose situation otherwise. It says, we've always believed that a mainland invasion of the United States would be difficult, if not impossible, but if an EMP weapon were to be used, our country could effectively be invaded within a matter of months as most of the population would be wiped out in the government, government and military infrastructures in disarray. That's not true. We do have satellites for a reason. We do have uh, a troop deployment in other countries for a reason. Uh, last year, Joel Skousen of World Affairs Brief warned that the World War III triggering event would likely come from a confrontation between North and South Korea, which are both essentially proxy regimes for the East and West. The trigger event has to be North Korea. North Korea is the most rogue element in the world, and yet it's been given a pass by the U.S., we don't do anything to stop its nuclear progress, unlike Iran. Well, that's very, very there's a good reason for that. Um, we have reason to believe the North would be stupid enough to bomb the South. And uh, Iran has a habit of exporting terrorism. North Korea, while vile in many ways that are worse than Iran, they don't really export terrorism. Again, it's all they can do to feed themselves, much less export terrorism. Russia and China, it's too early, they're not ready to go to war over Iran. And when you see North Korea launch against the South, and they do some minor military attack every year, so you've got to be careful not to confuse those with a major artillery barrage on Seoul. But if it ever starts, you know that you're days away from a nuclear war. 
people ought to get out of the major cities, for the major cities are going to be nuclear targets. They don't have that many weapons. But yes, if they were going to use one, L.A. Uh, would definitely be a target. New York would be a target. But, I mean, I'm in Canton, Ohio. I, I don't think they've got the weaponry to take out cities like Cleveland. They don't have that many of them. It says, with the world in economic panic and financial markets failing, it is only a matter of time before government officials start pointing the finger at their foreign comp competitors. It is a story that is often repeated throughout history, where those in charge, rather than taking responsibility for the failure of their own policies, instead take their countries to war to maintain power. And this is whether North Korea is planning to attack or simply doing this for show, as they have done before, remains to be seen. But tensions around the world are heating up on the economic front in cyberspace and now in military hotspots. And there is a reason that those in the know continue to prepare for widespread disaster. It's because the reality of such a scenario is more probable than ever before. Um, that's where you would hope that our country would be on this. I mean, I don't, I don't want us to shut down the electrical grid for the average North Korean citizen by doing what I'm about to say. Because the average North Korean citizen doesn't hate us. They hate what they've been taught we are. They're, 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 they, they're almost innocent. Uh, they really don't know anything about us. But it's better than having it happen to us because of their leaders. So you would hope that our leaders would be smart enough to, if this was going to happen, to set off some kind of an EMP there. Uh, to do a uh, to do some kind of submarine it's not submarine jamming I forget the name for it but uh, messing with the logistics of the uh, the submarine computers there are ways to do that you would hope that our nation and they likely are that our leaders are on this and that they really have some idea where these subs are pinging and things like that but do you trust Obama that much? This is why elections matter. This is why I'm happy I voted for Gary Johnson, because I'd feel a lot better if Gary Johnson was in office right now and something like this happened. I'd feel a lot better if Ron Paul was in office and 50 submarines in North Korea ended up missing. Obama? Especially after you just fired most of his uh, nuclear generals? Not good. All right, guys, we're going along today, but that's fine. The e Dumdy of the day. How many of you were waiting for the Dumdy of the day? Well, it's here, and as always, it is, in fact, quite dumb. The EPA spends $1.5 million on a stove intervention for Africa. Yes, right. That is your tax dollars. Your the money you are forced at gunpoint, pretty much, to give to the government. Here's what they go ahead, and here's what they do with it. That's why they win the dumdy of the day. Project attempting to change how people live in the Sahel of Africa cook and light their homes to be more energy efficient. The Environmental Protection Agency is spending 1.5 million on this. Uh, it, the project conducted by the University of Colorado is attempting to change how people living in the Sahel of Africa cook and light their homes so that they can be more energy efficient. The APA grant urge, argues the project is necessary because the population in this region, which lies between the Sahara Desert and the vast Sudanian savanna, is projected to continue to grow at alarming rates, meaning more carbon emissions when Africans cook. We know that man-made global warming is a lie. Man is not warming the planet. This is just an excuse. And this is what all of global warming is. Look up Lord Moncton. Look up Climate Gate before you tell me I'm wrong, because I'm not. I'm right. Uh, we haven't warmed in 15 years at all. This is according to NASA, even. And... This is an excuse to fleece the taxpayers, and another example of it right here. For this study, we will leverage an existing stove intervention study of 200 households in the region. Randomly selected rural households received pairs of improved wood cook stoves, the grant said. We expand that intervention study to assess stove use behaviors and emissions for an entire year 
and to add urban households and commercial cooking activities. This, this is what your tax dollars are going to. The, 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 it's just an excuse to get money out of you and for more of the 1% to profit in ways that you just saw there, friends. You're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange signing off on a very long but informative show. Uh, share this, would you? It's a huge help when you do that. I mean, you got more North Korean news and facts today than you're likely to get anywhere else. Share the work. It helps us grow immensely, and we thank you for doing it. Good night, friends. God bless. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. And remember... Every penny that you give to this show goes towards a better show, and you can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. Good night, friends. God bless.